I'm just glad that it's here because I would hate to have to stay home. It's easier to have people stare at you when you don't know them. If you know them, it bugs you more. You know, like if the the people you know at home, they they look at you like you're trash, and that hurts more than just people who, who see you on the street. Also, it's harder on the family. I mean, you know, the strain, there's a lot of strain. If they didn't have places like this, I'd probably have to go off in some town and get an apartment by myself and just sit there. Well, most of them are real quiet when they first get here, which is normal because they don't have anything to say to anybody and they're still upset because they're here. And Some of them cry for just hours. Some of them just accept it. They're still unhappy about it, but they accept it and they realize that crying's not gonna help. I don't think I cried once while I was here. It's terrible. I used to cry. I'd see a movie and I'd cry. Because <laughs> I, I get real involved. Sometimes if I'd get in the mood, I'd cry. I'd just go up to my room and cry. Now I'm not, I feel like my emotions are completely cut off. And I feel like I can't cry anymore. I want to cry. Sometimes I feel like, oh, if I could only cry, I'd feel better. Oh, I just, I was really confused and I felt just the whole world had just turned against me. I just didn't know how I was going to break the news to everybody. Because nobody would ever suspect me. Everybody was so shocked. I didn't know how I was going to say it. <laughs> I was trying to think of the right words to say it. Especially my parents, because I knew that it just really hurt them. Sometimes I think, oh, it's all his fault, but I know it's not. I mean, it's just as much my fault as it is his. We, when we talk about it, I'd always say no, because I could get pregnant, you know, and that's what I always said, and you know, because it's wrong. I've been pounded in, it's wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong, before marriage, you know. But at the same time, I wanted to make him happy. And I knew that, I mean, it wasn't like some people say that's the only way you can keep him, because I knew that wasn't it. When I had been drinking, it was something I wanted to do. Even though I felt that, you know, I felt it was wrong, but at the same time I didn't feel it was wrong because I felt that we loved each other and that it just seemed natural. The way you brought up does have something to do with it, but not, not in that final moment. I can't remember what I thought about the first night. I don't think I thought. I think I was just sort of blank. And everything, those first few days are sort of a blank. And they have this room. It's a little bitty room. And we call it isolation. And But whenever a new girl comes in, all the staff members say, the, the room with the three beds, you know, they don't like to call it isolation because it sounds terrible. You just go in there for a couple of days because everybody needs a little time to themselves when they're first here. And that way you aren't with the, just with a mob of kids because the dorms are big. You can't go to school if you're pregnant. Like one girl, she could have gone to school the first semester, but the principal found out she was pregnant, so they kicked her out. It's different where I live. I know a girl who was pregnant and married. She graduated. She was taking diet pills so she wouldn't gain any weight. <laughs> but uh, she got to finish school, and, and the principal was real nice about it, and he said, if you, you know, if you ever get sick in the morning, you don't have to come to school. And, I don't know how they'd react to somebody who wasn't married. I don't think they'd let them. I think it's only when they're married that they let them. But I know there's there's girls here that are going to school because they're married and pregnant and they can't go to regular schools. People look at unwed mothers and they think that they're all in the same situation by the same reasons and they're all different. Each girl has her own story, and there's no way you can say that you can just look at her and say, well, I know how she got here, because you don't. Some girls are going with another guy now, not the father. Some girls, the father doesn't even know. A lot of girls, nobody knows at all. I mean, you know, just their parents and, like, maybe one or two people. Some girls, the father calls them all the time. He comes up, you know, if he's if they live around close. Some that were planning on getting married after they left here. Some girls are planning on keeping their baby, even though they aren't going to be married. 
You'd think that there'd be somebody here who, who wouldn't know who the father is. I don't know of anybody. Everybody has been going with the same guy. Well, the ones that run around and go to bed with everybody always luck out. And I don't think society thinks that there's ever any love involved. I think they just think it's just kids playing around. But in most cases, it's love. And most cases, it's because they aren't ready to get married. That is why they're here instead of getting married. We laugh. <laughs> People don't, I mean, you know, you, you think, oh, they never laugh, you know, the poor girls. Oh, they have, never have any fun. Well, we make our own fun. You'd go crazy if you didn't. It doesn't make, it makes it more bearable. You got to laugh about something. You might as well laugh about yourself. Mm -hmm. And you got one, you know? I got five. Sixteen this time, right? No. Mm -hmm. I was thinking of three. Nine. 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 <laughs> Most girls know by the, you know, when they're here, whether they're going to give up their baby or not. We sign uh, release papers that give the home the authority to put a, our child up for adoption, because the law says that you have to uh, somebody's name has to be there, and we don't want our name there, because we don't want the people who are adopting it to see our name. We sign it off over to the Florence Crinton at home, so that way that uh, we don't have to see who it is. And so then the Florence Crinton at home, they've got people, you know, waiting, and so then they bring somebody in, and then two weeks after it's born, they it's put into its adoptive home, and then a year later it's adopted. The final papers are signed. It's still a pressure, though, because nobody, I mean, nobody here wants to. I mean, nobody here wants to just give it up and just forget about it. I mean, it's just something that they have to do. You don't even want to deliver because you want it, because it's still yours while you, before you deliver. But then when you deliver, it's not going to be yours anymore. Sometimes I think, well, what am I, what's it going to be like when I leave? Every time I see a baby, you know, every time I see a little girl or a little boy, well, I wonder. <laughs> you never really realize that you've got something live in, inside of you starts to move and get bigger. You know, when it kicks, you can feel the foot. And it really gets to you. I mean, then you realize what, what it really is like. Before you start feeling it kick, it's easier to think about giving it up. If I would have had to make the decision now, I don't think I could do it. But since I made my decision before, before I really started feeling it move and before I realized that it, I had something alive in me. It's you've got something wonderful inside you, but you know it's hard to give it up. It's hard <laughs> when you're in a home. You can't do everything you want, and so you miss the things. You miss being able to stay up late because you want to, and you miss going skiing. You miss being skinny. <laughs> Like, we get excited about having pizza, <laughs> having salt. We get excited because <laughs> it's fattening. Like, we never get pizza because, you know, you have heartburn, and, and half the time you can't use salt. A lot of the girls are on water pills. Their ankles swell up, and, and uh, they gain all kinds of weight. Lots of times we, we have conversations and we talk about how we're going to take all the guys for what they're worth and make them spend all kinds of money on us and everything. But the way that the guys have treated them, and, you know, like when they found out they were pregnant, as if it was all the girl's fault. Like she's a hot potato, they just drop her. And and uh, some of them put it on, you know, and and play up to her so they, they won't get in trouble. And then the minute she agrees not to get him in trouble, you know, like making him pay for child support or suing him for anything. Then he drops her. And we might do that at first, but after a while, we won't be like that. You can't really blame us for wanting a guy to spend money on us and, and you know, everything. Make him sort of pay for, <laughs> make us feel like we aren't just outcasts. We've seen films about it, so we know what's going on. Lots of times girls are scared because they don't know what's going to happen. And if you know what's going on, then it's not something to be so afraid of. It's just that 
I, we've gone through so much anyway. I mean, we've had to face quite uh, quite a bit. I mean, more than somebody who's married. <laughs> and uh, most girls can take it. Most, it's their time to go, and they're ready for it. I was awake through the whole thing. I was talking to the nurses the whole time, keep my mind off of it. And then I remember pushing and everything. And then it was over. Then I, they showed me the baby, and I mean, she had a real chubby face. <laughs> and uh, she had sh real short, straight hair, dark hair. And uh, she, she had her eyes closed, but she kept opening them. And then she had a little smile on her face. <laughs> Oh, I kept thinking how cute she was and all this, and I just couldn't believe it was really, she was really mine then. <laughs> she won't be mine for long, but well, how can we keep her? Because, oh, well, I, so I, I could provide for her, but not like I'd want to. People would always be looking down on her, blaming her for my mistake, because that's the way people are. And it's not, I mean, she didn't ask to be born, and, and it's not her fault that she'd be blamed. The home gives us the choice of seeing the baby. You can have the baby brought here, and you get to be alone with her, the baby for a half hour or so. You're with her for a little bit, and then they, somebody has to take her away, and you know, that's the last time you see her. Some, sometimes it's easier just to see him at the hospital and not see him again. I don't know, I just hate to just let her go without showing any affection. Or, I just hate to let her go without seeing her.